and welcome to another episode of Foo Bar. In today's video I want to show you how to create a secure AWS account. If you are interested in watching more content like this, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post a video every Tuesday, so let's get started! <laughs> I want to show you how to create a secure AWS account. I will show you the steps that you need to follow in order to have it secure. We won't be creating one account, we will be creating two. So how AWS works is that you will have your root account, that is the one that you will create with your credit card and all that stuff. And that will be like the master of the universe account, that will have access to all the services, super admin, rights but you don't want to use that account you don't want to give programmatic access to applications to access that account you don't want to give you don't want to use that account in general because that that account has a lot of privileges and you cannot revoke the privilege so if somebody hack into your account they change the password then you are locked out so what you want to do is you have a very very secure root account we'll be creating a user with admin rights in that account and then we will be using that account for everything else and that secondary account will be also very secure we are going to secure everything with a two-factor authentication so you will need to download some app for your phone it can be google authenticator or others for doing this you will need also a credit card because aws will require you a credit card and you will need also a phone that can receive calls because they need to validate that you're a real person they will call you so let's go to the code so the first thing we want to do when creating an account is to go to the aws page you can explore there all the different products they have and also you can go to the pricing tab and there you can see all the information that you will get when you register an AWS account. You have the free tier and some services are free for 12 months, some services are always free so you can go and check them out. After you have checked that then you can go and press the button create an AWS account and we can get started. Let's follow the steps to create a new AWS account. You just put your email I will block everything with a gray thingy so you don't see all my information and then you put I'm a new user and then you can just sign in you type your name your email address again and then you put a very secure password this is the root account as i mentioned before so we want to have a very secure password even though we are going to up use a two-factor authentication we want to have a secure password here then you need to fill your contact information you can pick if you're a company or you're a person and i will be picking a person and i will be filling this up with my contact information then you put the security check sometimes that security check is tricky but just try to fill it up and you continue then you put your credit card information and you can continue as well the identity verification step is the tricky step because here you will need to provide your telephone number and that sometimes doesn't work if you're in the US I heard it works very well but if you're outside the US there is some problem the bot might call you and the pin might not work or the bot might never call you and then you're waiting there for a while but if this doesn't work then you will get a message that says that you need to contact them and there if you click that contact box then it will open a page where you can check if you want to chat with someone and they usually have 24 7 chat you can uh, start chatting with a human and that human will ask you for your phone number and they will call you and when they call you they will ask you for some information to verify that you are you and then they will do all this process uh, automatically so if you cannot get the bot to call you don't worry there is always a human that can call you if you manage to get the call from the bot you need to input this pin number or any well the pin number will change after that succeed then you will be moving to the support plan page and we will pick the basic that is the free support no help whatsoever basically just the forums and another billing questions and things like that but then um, we pick that one and we continue after that we just can launch the management console we have done all the steps we have our root account and we can get started to securing it. The first thing we are going to do is to go to IAM and IAM is the Identity and Access Managed Service from AWS and there they will show us that we have five steps to complete to make our AWS account secure. 
The first step is done for us already, that is delete your root access keys, meaning that you cannot access programmatically this account. The next step is to activate the two-factor authentication in your root account. For that, you will need to have installed some application in your phone either Google Authenticator or others to get you one-time passwords. Here, if you click a virtual MFA device, if you have a phone, then you click Next. And in this step, it will show you in the here, that is blue and, and a little bit linky. If you click there, it will show you what other applications are uh, AWS MFA compatible, like Google Authenticator, but there are others. So just go there and check if you have not installed any, or if you have one and you want to make sure that it works. After you have installed the application, then you can click Next. And here, just go to your application, scan this barcode, and put your two consecutive authentication codes. You might need to wait 60 seconds for the codes to refresh. At least that's what happens in Google Authenticator. And now every time you want to log into your root account, you will need to put your password and your one thousand password from your phone application. One thing you can do also from here is to change the URL where users sign, used to sign in. You will have a specific URL that is the account number plus some stuff. But if you can change it to something more user friendly, I will put learning serverless, but you can use anything you want. So after you have done that, then you can go and create your first user. This I will have an admin user, but I won't assign any permissions to it. I will just make it flat. So you have student one and you want to give them programmatic access to it. That is the SDKs or APIs access. And then you want to give a management console access that is the username and password. So when the user logs in for the first time, it will need to change the password. And I will add users to a group later. So now we just click next. We have a user without any permissions. This page is very important. Here it will show us the secret key and the password for this user and the access key for this user. So there is this CSV file that you can download. You should save securely because you will need it whenever you are logging for the first time to the admin console that will ask you for this password or whenever you are configuring the programmatic access for this user, for example, when we are setting up serverless framework. These keys won't, won't be displayed again, so you will need to regenerate them. So it's good that you keep them safe in some place that you can access them whenever you need. After you close this page, you don't have access more to download this file. Download it, keep it safe, and then you can continue. The next step we want to do is to go back to the dashboard and create a group. These groups we are managing the permissions in a group-based permission, so the groups will have the permissions and users will get assigned to those groups. So then it's easier to just remove the user from the group and the user will have no permissions whatsoever. This makes the whole administration more secure. It's a good practice that you have the permissions in the group level. So I will just manage groups and create a new group and I will put the name admins and I will be giving the policy of administrator. And then I can create the group. You can make as many groups as you want, as fine grained as you want. And then there you can add users to the group. We only have one user, that is the student one, and I, it's added there. And the last step is to apply a policy, a password policy, whenever the user will sign in to the console. But I like to make it a little bit complicated, so the passwords are not just admin admin, they can be something more and I apply that password policy. We copy the URL from this, uh, that we change the signing URL, and then we will log out from this account and we will not come back ever. There is no need to come back, maybe for some billing stuff, but besides that, there is no need to come back. We can paste in our browser that URL, that signing URL, and give enter, and we will log in with our user uh, student one that we just created. We put the password that was in the CSV file and we log in. And then we can, the first thing it will ask is that we want to change that password. We should put a secure password again, because this is a admin user. It has access to everything. Now we go back to the I am, and we will give a two-factor authentication to this user as it's an admin user. And we don't want nobody to steal our passwords and be able to start abusing from our services. Even now, if somebody st steals this account, it's not that big issue because we are still in control of our root account, so we can go there and we can basically remove this user from the group or we can even delete this user. 
So we are doing exactly the same steps that we did before. We are assigning an MFA, a virtual MFA device to this account and we are configuring it with, in my case, Google Authenticator. I just put the two authentication codes, the scan the barcode and ta -da, now it's associated. And now this account, whenever I want to log in, I need to have the console login link, the username, the password and the two-factor authentication. Now you have a very secure AWS account for all your projects. This was the video for today. I hope you like it. If you did, give a big thumbs up and I hope you find it uh, easy now, even if you have an AWS account, to know how to secure your account and to make it less vulnerable for others to steal your credentials and to get into control of your credit card. Around here, as always, there are other videos from my channel that YouTube recommends to you, so go around and check it out. And I see you in the next episode of Fubar. Ciao!